on just now. Yeah, give him plenty of time to bail out and get in the clear. I know. And don't fire right at the plane. We want that shell to explode about 500 yards above and behind it. He's in the clear. Yeah, but he's got no business being there. Fire that gun before Tonja's plane crashes. The bomb got that other plane. You Identify the guy that flew that crate. That plane was a thousand feet from the bomb when it exploded. Every inch of it. Old Weaver's bomb was a greater success than we expected. No wonder Old Weaver was sore when the chief insisted that he take an extra bomb along in case the first one didn't work. Yeah. Hey, uh, we'll have to get that extra bomb. It must be over there where those fryers are burning. The bomb must be there with that gun. And only one man guarding it. Grab that bomb. Smash the ignition on that truck so they can't get away with the gun. Jitters to think the chief has already sold the bomb to a foreign country. But he'd have it tried out on me. Good. Green Horn. They've got the bomb. That Hornet's car is bulletproof. This will sure put us in a bad spot with the chief. You ain't fooling. Where are we going? Home, where you're going to carefully analyze this bomb. It should prove most interesting. And after that, it will mysteriously find its way into the hands of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They will be much surprised to receive it. They'll be more surprised when they read the note explaining its destructive force and the fact that it's being manufactured at the Grimbold Steel Company for a foreign government. Men who are so disroyal to their own country deserve harsh treatment. Don't worry. They'll get it. The Green Hornet has cost us a million dollars getting away with that bomb. I can't see how. We can make more bombs, can't we? How can we? Weaver never gave us the secret formula for the magnetic force that makes it so effective. Can't we put the pressure on him and his partner, Bedlow? If we can find them. Frank's just reported that Bedlow and Weaver have both disappeared. Not bad if I do say it myself. Miss Frances Grayson, aluminum products heiress, who recently returned from Europe to take over her inheritance, is so impressed with the product they are manufacturing that she is having built with great secrecy a special aluminum sport plane for her personal use. At a cost of $300,000. Holy crow. Miss Grayson stated... So how'd you get this story, Lowry? I thought Miss Grayson didn't talk to reporters. Oh, I have a way with me, Casey. 
Sure, if you ask me. Nobody's asking you. Nevertheless, I'm telling you. I'll bet you got the story from the Grayson Cook. <laughs> Good morning, all. Good morning, Good Chief. Good morning. Hey, come into the office, all of you. Lowry, I read your Grayson airplane story. That's pretty swell work getting a story on that, Jane, eh, boss? That was pretty good reporting, but Mr. North, the head of aluminum products, Miss Grayson's company, is a little worried about it. Why is that? Well, you see, Miss Grayson just returned from Europe. She doesn't know the town's full of racketeers. When they find out that she can spend that much money on what's practically a toy, they're going to consider her a pretty good, pretty good prospect. I hadn't thought of that. And what did you think of my story of him hijacking that anti-aircraft gun? Well, Michael, you covered that very well. Anything special for me this morning, boss? Yes, Lowry. I've heard a rumor that the FBI are starting an investigation at the Grimbo Steel Plant. Try to get a line on it. That's a tough assignment, but I'm on my way. Oh, Michael, just a minute. Case, Mr. North wanted me to call on Miss Grayson. Will you see if you can get an appointment for me today? Yes, sir. Michael, I want you to go out there with me. While I'm interviewing Miss Grayson, you have a look around outside. You're expecting trouble there? You never can tell. I've got to give Miss Grayson a little advice about these racketeers. Ah. Did you see this morning's Sentinel, Chief? I was just reading it. That story about Francis Grayson gave me an idea. I thought it would. The syndicate needs a good one about now. 300000 for a private airplane. If Grayson can throw our money away like that, our syndicate can put it to much better use. And how? Maybe we can get back some of the dough the Green Hornet swindled us out of. Yes, and I'm betting right now that the Green Hornet is also planning to cut into the Grayson money. Well, we got to beat him to it. We can, if what I have in mind works out. What is it, Chief? I have a pretty complete plan to relieve Miss Grayson of a substantial sum. More or less painlessly, unless she's stubborn. Her stubbornness shouldn't worry us. First of all, after Dolan and DeLuca finish mapping out the Grayson ground... You mean they're already on their way? They've been instructed to look the place over... I got to hand it to you, Chief. Once you get an idea, you sure don't waste any time. Find a gardener or a chauffeur or somebody and get him into conversation. Sure, and I'll talk his head off. Grayson is expecting me. Oh, Miss Grayson is waiting in the library, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. How do you do, Miss Grayson? I'm glad to know you, Mr. Reed. Mr. North of Aluminum Products has a great deal of confidence in you. He was most anxious that I should meet you. Mr. North is an old and valued friend of mine. Uh -huh. He seems greatly worried about the story that appeared in your paper about my new plane. Yes, he told me about it. I... well, I want to apologize for running it. Apologize? Yes. But I really can't see what harm it could do. True, I was having it built in secrecy, but uh, it... The danger is this, Miss Grayson. There's a vicious criminal syndicate operating in this city, and the fact that you are spending $300,000 on a plane for your private use might cause them to turn their attention to you. Well, of course. I should have thought of that. Well, I hope you escape their notice. But if any time anything unusual occurs, don't fail to call me. Any one of these numbers here will reach me night or day. Well, thank you, Mr. Reed. And I'm sincerely grateful for your interest. Well, it's been a pleasure, Miss Grayson. Did you talk with any of the servants? I did that. I found a chauffeur back there I don't like the looks of at all at all. All right, Michael, stick around. But be sure to call me at the office before six. I'll do that, sir. Send the driver in with these and he can give us a signal. Mark's flowers for Miss Grayson. Sign here. Come on. It's okay, let's go. Entrance 
entrance to the basement around here somewhere. The butler down there, lock him up. Gordy, go outside and find the chauffeur in the garden and take care of him. But no gunplay. Just tie him up and lock him in the garage. Nobody in the library. Let's take a look around upstairs. Okay. Save your breath, lady. Who are you? What are you doing here? Now, there's no cause for alarm, Miss Gracie. Marie! Coming, ma'am. Uh, take care of Marie. Okay. Now, just don't get excited and take it easy. Nothing's going to happen to you. No need to ring. You have a complete new staff of servants on hand ready to answer any cause. Don't think you can frighten me. We still have police protection in this city. Police? They won't do any good now, lady. What is it you want? Money? You guessed it, sister. Now, let's get right down to business. Now, then, we'll make the first check for, say, uh, $10,000. Then we'll take them in installments until we get what we want. That's it. In a series. You see, it might not be so easy to cash the one check for the full amount. And while we're cashing them, we're going to stay right here and help you take care of this house. You'll get no checks out of me. I won't be blackmailed. Ah, uh, we have plenty of ways of making you change your mind, Miss Grace, so you better think it over. Even if I did give you a check... My bank wouldn't pay out that amount of money without verifying with me by phone. We thought of that, too. You see, when the bank telephones, the young lady we have here with us will tell the bank that it's all okay. Hey, look. They lay off that gun. Yeah, but it's that ex-cop, you know, Reed's bodyguard. I know, I know, but Tower said no shooting out here. We'll tie him up and hide him inside. Has Axford phoned yet? No, sir. Have not heard from him all afternoon. Oh, that's funny. I told him to check with me before 6 o'clock. Something must have happened to him. Yes. Mr. Axford is always very punctual. I think I'll call Miss Grayson. Yes, this is a Grayson residence. One moment, please. Britt Reed's on the phone. He insists on talking to Miss Grayson. Tell him Miss Grayson will be here in a minute. Please hold the wire, sir. Miss Grayson will be on the phone in a moment. Thank you. Am I talking to Miss Grayson's butler? Uh, no, sir. This is the second man. Uh, here's Miss Grayson now, sir. Oh, yes, Mr. Reed. I'm sorry to trouble you, Miss Grayson, but I'm trying to check on Mr. Axford's whereabouts. Have you seen him around your place? Oh, uh, Mr. Axford left here about uh, 4 o'clock. I'm sure of that because I heard him talking to the gardener about the flowers uh, just a little while before then. You're sure he was there at 4 then? Oh, quite sure. I see. Well, thank you very much, Miss Grayson. Oh, it was no trouble at all, really. Uh, goodbye. <clears throat> so, can I put it over? You were all right. Well, thank you. I go upstairs and take care of that day. Oh, all right. She says Axford was there at 4. If he had, then he would have called me. Yes, it is not like Axford to forget, Mr. Britt. There's something wrong there, Cato. Yes, Mr. Britt? The woman I talked to was not Miss Grayson. Perhaps the police should be notified. No. If that gang has moved in and taken Axford and Miss Grayson prisoner, that's a job for the Green Hornet. <laughs> Tim, you're 
bikes and silence your motor. Then pull in among the trees near the bridge. Whatever happens, stick to our plan. Yes, Mr. Brent. You're gone. I was right. He's one of the gang. Then they have taken over the entire house, and our friends are prisoners. Yes, undoubtedly. We'll have to get into the house without being seen. Our only chance is to surprise them. Inside. I'll look for Miss Grayson in Oxford. You call the police. Where is their telephone? There's one in the garage. I noticed the wire today. another check and sign it as you did this cancel them with your legal signature. Don't sign that, Miss Grayson. The green Hornet. Keep your hands away from that gun. Miss Grayson, get behind him. Pull that gun out of his pocket. Now, toss it in the corner. Get out to my car. It's under the trees near the bridge. Turn off the light, Miss Grayson, and run! 